السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونسلي على رسول كريم أما بعد Dear brothers and sisters today I would like to talk about and I would like all of us to reflect upon a sincere advice from a father to his son and the advice that I am talking about is the advice that was given by Luqman and the story is mentioned in Surah Luqman in the Holy Quran now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed Luqman so much that he made a surah after him. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to bless someone, he mentions them in the Quran. Like Luqman and the Nabiyun, the Prophets and the Messengers that he has mentioned in the Quran. At the same time, if Allah subhanahu wa wants to humiliate someone, they are also mentioned in the Holy Quran. Such as Fir'aun, such as Abu Lahab. These examples tell us what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whom he is blessing and whom he is humiliating. But in both the situations, the names remained in the Holy Quran till the end of times. You and I and people are going to be benefiting from these stories till the day of judgment. And that is what we need to keep revisiting these stories so that we understand, so that we reflect. So who is Luqman? When we have somebody to introduce to an audience. We usually take two or three minutes talking about him, about his, the person's credentials, about their education, about their experiences, about their qualifications, how they have been progressing in life and so on. You introduce people in this way. But how does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduce Luqman? A man who is better than everyone other than the prophets and whomever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala introduces him by saying وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا لُقْمَانَ الْحِكْمَةِ That is all. That is all there is to Luqman Radiallahu's credentials, his introduction. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who has given him hikmah. And you don't need anybody else to vouch for it after that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself is saying so. Wisdom. And everything else that is mentioned in this story of Luqman radiallahu uh, anh is because of this hikmah that Allah has given him. That is the core of it. Luqman was not a prophet. He was not a messenger. But he was a righteous slave amongst Allah's servants. Righteous slave. And what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him, that was worthy enough to be mentioned in none other than the book of Allah. Al-Hikmah. What is this hikmah? Is this hikmah that we're talking about just reserved for the prophets and messengers? Or for righteous people like Luqman? The answer is no. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He gives it to whoever He wills and whoever He uses. This hikmah is a lot of goodness. 
a lot of khair from the treasures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We cannot imagine it. So you should raise your hands and seek this hikmah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is exactly what the prophets and messengers used to do. They used to seek this hikmah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-hikmah in the Arabic language it comes from hukum and hakam. Hakam it is in fact referred to the reins that you put on a horse. The reins that you put on a horse to control the horse. That is called hakam. You have those reins to move the horse forward, to move it to the right or left, or just to stop it. So this hikma is coming from that point of control. The control is the point. That one controls their life in such a way that they do what is right and permissible and avoid that which is prohibited. You have control over your life? Or are you like an unsettled horse which does not have reins to control? Is your life like that? But you are not able to control it. You are not able to do good. You are not about, about, able to avoid evil. Is that how you are? So this hikmah that we are seeking from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to control and be on the right and correct path. That is what we desire. And part of having hikmah is to have gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anyone who thanks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means there is some levels of hikmah with him or not. So thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah. Both by your tongue and by the actions of your worship. So the story that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives of Luqman is the advice that Luqman gives his son. There is an important point to note here. The greatest contribution that a father can make towards his son or towards his children is to educate them is to teach them the rights and norms of life. This one page in the Holy Quran which tells the story of Luqman, it is all about Luqman's advice, his teachings, his instructions towards his son. Good, sound, constant advice is what we need to do. Towards good and far from bad and evil. And the greatest contribution for a mother is the fact that somebody is alive. That she kept you in her womb for nine months and gave birth to you. The greatest contribution of the mother is that. And the father's job starts after. It is Obvious from the story of Luqman and other prophets that we know of that a father's greatest contribution is this sound advice that I'm talking about. So Luqman sat down his son one day and he told him, Ya Bunay, oh my beloved son. So look at the start that Luqman is given. Straight away he is indicating to his son that I love you. I love you. Even before he starts the advice, he is telling the son that you are beloved to me. And he says it again and again. Constantly. He is repeating in, in this page itself. It is to make him understand, to make the son understand that the advice that is about to come is because the father loves the son. You see, 
The reason is that a child's relationship with a mother, it is always soft, tender, caring, full of mercy. By default, that's what comes. A child tends to know already that a mother loves him or her. But when it comes to the fathers, there is a different image. When the child sees their father in an anger mode, the child sees their father in a busy mode, the child sees the father more committed to outside affairs compared to the mother. Which is why it is all the more important that the fathers let their children know that they love them. It needs to be obvious, it needs to be told before you advise. Just like the man. So in this page of the Quran itself, Luqman calls out to his son, Ya Bunai, three times. Again and again and again before starting every piece of advice. Ya Bunai, Ya Bunai, Ya Bunai, Oh my beloved son, Oh my beloved son. He could have just said, Oh my son. He said, Oh my beloved son, whom I love so much. He's making it obvious. I love you and that's why I'm telling you. So the man says, Ya Hunayi. And as for the Mufassirun, they say that the son of Luqman had actually come to Luqman with a question. And the answer of it is on this page. And the question was, Oh my father, I have committed a sin where no one has seen me. No one has seen me. Will Allah see me? Has Allah seen me? Easy question, right? Of course, Allah sees you everywhere. But Luqman, the Hikmah, he did not make the answer as simple as that. He did not make it so easy. He wanted to tell his son that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watchful over everything. Just like I mentioned. He wanted to say it. But he did not use simple words to say it. Allah is watching everything. You can't do it. He didn't say that. But instead, he took the best of examples possible. He gave him an example to make him understand who Allah is. So that the son can relate to the situation by understanding who Allah is. Luqman said, my son, imagine that there was a mustard seed. Mustard seed is very small. Imagine that there was a mustard seed and a tiny, very tiny seed. And imagine that this seed is buried deep inside a boulder. Now a boulder is a huge rock. Almost a half mountain. Like I mean, Maybe the size of this masjid is what a boulder would be. Right? You would wrong. So it is buried deep inside a boulder. And if I was to ask you, meaning Luqman is telling his son, if I was to ask you to go and find it, find that mustard seed in this boulder. Almost an impossible task. Very difficult. And suppose the son of Luqman was to go searching for it. First and foremost, you would need to know which boulder to look for. Right? There are so many boulders throughout the earth. Some which humans have even discovered, some which humans have not even discovered. So even the task of locating the boulder is beyond impossible. And if he has to find this mustard seed, he needs to know exactly which boulder to look at. And as I said, that is impossible. But let's for, for argument's sake, let's assume that the son knew exactly which boulder. So now he, the boulder is right in front of him, for argument's sake, and he needs to find the mustard seed in that huge masjid sized boulder. What does he need to do? He needs to break it. He needs to break that huge rock of a boulder. How is he going to do that? 
How is he going to do that? With all the latest machinery, it takes time to break a boulder. Right? Huge drilling going on and deep inside. Now again, for argument's sake, let's say he breaks the boulder. Does he know that the mustard seed is exactly in the middle of the boulder so he can just drill there? No. No guarantee that it's going to be exactly in the center of the boulder. It could be anywhere in the boulder, right? It is whole mustard. Let's just imagine yourself. A mustard seed we need to locate where it is in this mustard. In an open area it will be impossible to find. Let alone a rock which you have to break open to see where it is. And it is not there right at the center. How can the man's son get to that mustard seed? He will literally have to break that boulder into small, small pieces the size of a mustard seed to find that mustard seed. Right? Which means he will have to break the boulder into a billion pieces. A billion pieces. Again, impossible to find that seed. He will have to go through all the billion pieces. Wouldn't have enough knife to do that. On top of that, then Lukman adds. He says that the mustard seed and the boulder that I am talking about, it could be anywhere on the earth or the seven heavens. He has made the already impossible task beyond impossible for his son. But what is the man actually talking about? What is the seed that he is talking about? The seed that he is talking about is actually the sin that a person does. The sin that a person does. Small, tiny mistake. Size of a mustard seed of disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the size of the boulder and the earth and the heavens that we are talking about. You know what is that referring to? That is referring to the efforts that a human being goes to hide his sin. To keep it secure. Nobody should know. The efforts to hide that sin. Which is as small as a mustard seed. Then the man says, Yakti Bihilla. Allah will bring forth that mustard seed of a sin with no effort. So on the day of judgment, that tiny small sin that you did of disobedience, you hid it so well from anybody and everybody, Allah brings it forth with no effort. Just imagine this whole scenario. The man is making his son understand the power of Allah. Who Allah is. Something impossible, beyond impossible, Allah will do it with no effort. Zero effort. You will see it on the day of judgment, every tiny sin that you did. Because Allah will be it. What happens today is when we tell our children, Fear Allah. Don't do anything. Stop doing bad. And these words circulate in the minds of the child. Don't do this, don't do this. Fear Allah. Okay. But there are those words going around in their mind without understanding. Why should I fear Allah? What is the reasoning behind it? Look at Luqman. He gave his son an image, an example, to make him understand first who Allah is. What is his power? He showed him who Allah is. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he loved this example. It is the best example to give us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved this example so much that he put it in the Quran till the day of judgment. 
Read it. Learn from it. To stay there till the day of the And Luqman, he concluded his advice by saying, Inna Allah latifun khabir. Verily, Allah is subtle. He is precise and he is watchful. Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows exactly with precision what sin you did, where you did it, why you did it, how you did it, when you did it. He knows it exactly with precision. It is truly an incredible example for one to imagine. And this example has been given. And now the son has understood that Allah is watchful over all things. So that is the first clarity in the mind that is required. Why and how capable Allah is to watch you anywhere and everywhere. And once that understanding is done, then Luqman says, Ya Bumay, Aqim is Salah. Oh my beloved son, now you establish prayer. So first you need to understand that Allah is watching you before you establish the prayer. If there is no Tawheed in the heart, if you do not understand who Allah is, if you do not understand is Allah that Allah is truly watching you, then that establishing of prayer makes no sense. You're doing it for the sake of people in that case. So teach your children Tawheed and the meaning of it first. Teach your children the meaning of the oneness of Allah in all aspects first. Teach your children that the owner of the sun, the moon, the stars, the galaxies, the food, the drink, the humans, the animals, the birds, anything and everything is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Nobody else. And then, once you have understood this fact, then aqim is salah. Then you pray with conviction. Establish that prayer in that way. Build it on the foundations so that your akhirah is ready. Because you need, you need to establish the pillars of Islam in your life so that your relationship with Allah gets built. You need to build that relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Work towards it. Then Luqman says, وَأْمُرْ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ Enjoin the good, prohibit the evil. So once you understand who Allah is, once you understand that He is watchful, once you, after that you start praying regularly, and then you start telling people, do good, avoid evil, don't do this, do that. Some of us might be going back to work after this Juma. You go back to work, you see a couple of colleagues uh, backbiting. <laughs> Okay? And because of what you have heard today, you need to forbid evil. You go to them and say, don't, don't talk about other people behind their backs. This is haram. And assume your colleagues are puzzled and are looking at you. What is wrong with you? Yesterday you were backbiting with us. What has changed? Let them know what has changed. You have heard the word. You have established the prayer after that. And now you need to do the next step, which is to enjoy good and forbid evil. And that is exactly what you're trying to do. Stop the evil, warning them for that purpose. This is how it should be. You need to understand that enjoying good and forbidding evil is a must. But what happens when you do this? When you ask somebody to do good and stop evil, what happens? People stop liking you. People don't like you anymore. Ah, stopping me from doing these things, which I like. Is it not? What is happening around the world? Think about it. People who are trying to speak about the haqq, 
about justice, about the truth. What is happening to them? They are being killed. They are being banned on social media. Right? They are being exiled. They are being put in prison. They are being thrown out of their own lands. Why? They are speaking the truth. People don't like it. So, people are not going to like it when you fight for haq. And Luqman is telling his son that it is obvious. Even within families, a child telling a father, Father, don't, don't take riba, don't take interest, it is haram. What will be the father's reaction? You don't know anything. You haven't seen the world. It is the need of the hour. We have to take interest, we have to take riba. Even the father will not like his son speaking the things, speaking about the heart. That is the situation we have come to, my dear brothers and sisters. So what does Luqman advise his son in the end? He says, you still enjoy good. You still forbid evil. You still face whatever abuse you end up facing. It might be physical insult. But do it. You have to do it. And he says, as you do it, be patient no matter how much you are facing it. And that is what we need to do, my dear brothers and sisters. We need to remain patient while we do these things that I just mentioned today. Right? We need to. And this is exactly how the life of a Muslim should be. Understand who Allah is. Worship Allah and establish the prayers after that. Enjoy good and forbid evil. And be patient when you face the consequences of that enjoining of good and forbidding of evil. This is what it is. And this, if we do, is going to be the most noble and greatest of deeds in the life of a Muslim and inshallah in our lives as we strive to be true Mormons and true Muslims. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to understand the Quran. May He, may he subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the hikmah the way He did to Luqman. And may He forgive us. For our sins that we may have committed. Akhiru da'wana. Alhamdulillahi